kind of person to be a referee, right? You have to be able to handle getting heckled by the fans and often yelled at by players and coaches. But it is also a very rewarding profession and one that takes a lot of skill. Our Ryan Carter sat down with three brothers from Hutchinson who turned to officiating in order to keep their passion for the game alive. Well, guys, welcome, and thanks for coming all the way up here to Tom Reed's Hockey City Pub. I want to get right into it, officiating. Now, did you guys grow up hockey players? Yeah. We did, yep. yep. And all three brothers, who's the oldest? I am the oldest. I'm in the middle. I'm the youngest. Okay, cool. And all three played hockey throughout high school. Who was the best high school player? Probably Lane. I'm going to say Lane, too. Yeah, Lane, yeah, Lane had the most points. <laughs> I'll take it. And less penalty minutes, so... <laughs> So you guys use this as a, as you, like your your high school job. You were officials too. You played, but you were officials on the side. Yep. yep. And and what what got you guys started in that? We all started officiating pretty young when we were still playing in our youth careers, like 10 and 11 years old. We all started. We saw it was good money, and once we hit high school, a summer job wasn't really a thing playing multiple sports in high school. So. It was easier to, to ref in the winter rather than try to get a summer job, and it was good enough money that it would get us through the year, so that's kind of how we stuck with it. We just got hooked into such a great connection of guys in District 5 that really helped us out and you know, carried all three of us to the point where we're at now. This, this intrigues me a little bit. So you've had a chance to be a ref uh, while you were probably still playing and throughout athletics too. Do you treat referees differently now because well, you've been on both sides of that coin? Uh, I, I do, I, un I understand where they all come from. When I was playing, always thought like a referee, I guess. Understanding why they called something, always having to explain to your coach or your buddy on the bench why something was called even though they disagree. You got to be kind of the mediator between the two. Kendall, you've had some formal training, right? Like you've gone to, is it an NHL camp? Yep. And how was that? It was one of the coolest experiences of my life. One of the hardest things I've ever done um, physically, comparing yourself to guys who played professionally and who are classically trained in officiating professionally and then competing with them and working with them. It was, it was very challenging, but it was really cool to see how it operates at that level. So what are some situations, I actually do want to just ask a couple of these questions. You're a linesman, you're on the, the blue line bench side. Are you one of those guys that jumps up and kind of sits on the bench and lets it go through? No, why not? No, you don't want to get pushed over. You don't want to be the guy falling on the bench. It's the same as getting hit in the game over the bench. And then you're going to catch heat from all the players and the coaches, but try to avoid that, I guess. Yeah, dad always said nothing ever good happens when you leave your feet. <laughs> so when you're up on the bench, you're at the mercy of everybody around you. So don't jump on the bench. Uh, if you're tall enough to just kind of climb up there, that's great. I'm a little too short for that, though. Yeah, so. no, no jumping. <laughs> not me. Or how about, how about like penalty kill situations? You know not to hang around like the wall or the blue lines because somebody's going to send the heater at you know, off the glass. Or it, You're always trying to yell at people, but I mean, at the younger levels, even high school, I mean, kids don't pay attention. They're ripping it wherever they want, so you're kind of playing dodgeball out there for a little bit. Oh, yeah. Kendall, I, I'm curious about this too. Is it, do you guys practice dropping pucks, and is there an art to it? There is definitely an art, and the good guys you can definitely tell practice. Last year when COVID shut down a lot of the rinks and a lot of the games, um, we shoveled off the pond down at our house, and we would go out there and just drop pucks and just practice stacking them up. And up at the collegiate and pro level, you know, the best linesmen out there are the guys who can sit there, put it right down in the middle and watch it spin, you know, and that, that's, it's definitely, definitely a skill. So Ty, what are the keys to a good puck drop? Uh, it's got to be flat. It's got to be hard. It's got to be consistent. Ty likes bouncing puck drops, so <laughs> no, <laughs> never do. <laughs> so uh, I think it'll probably eat you guys. Are you excited to work at Blakesley Stadium and, and why? Yeah, I mean, our dad played college football at Mankato, played at Blakesley. Uh, we grew up going to games there, watching football games. It'll be cool to skate at the same stadium that he played in. Yeah, I think it's really cool. It'll be cool to finally have it down south, so it'll be different from past years for sure. So it'll be a pretty Instagrammable moment when you guys are out there <laughs> roughing together. Uh, Hopefully. Right? Yeah. yeah. A little street cred and, and yeah, walk yeah. around the halls at Gus Davis. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to do it for 